Now, a space probe that was designed and built in Stevenage has blasted off on a two-year journey to the sun. Well, let's hope the solar orbiter will help unlock some of the mysteries of the star at the centre of our solar system. It's expected to circumnavigate the sun 22 times, sending back high-quality images. Uh, let's talk to Libby Jackson, who's the Human Exploration Programme Manager at the UK Space Agency. Uh, Libby, welcome to you. Um, it's going to be going as close as 26 million miles to the sun, the temperature there, something like 600 degrees. It relies on titanium to stop it from melting. Uh, yeah, it is an amazing engineering marvel. One, as you say, that's been built here in the UK. It's great that it's safely on its way now, and we're looking forward to seeing all the data that comes back when it reaches its orbit. The understanding that it will help us will help all of us back here on Earth because it's going to tell us about solar winds and solar storms, and they can knock out satellites that we all rely depend on every day in space and cause issues with our national grid. Uh, so it's a hugely important mission and one that the UK is leading. Yeah, it, it does appear to be one of those missions which, as well as the pure science, has the practical applications as well, doesn't it? Uh, why do we have to get so close to the sun to really measure things like solar flares and, uh, and the sorts of things that are going to prove useful? Um, the uh, sun's magnetic field is, is at the heart of many, much of this. Um, it sort of stretches and, and moves around and, and when you get these bubbles of plasma uh, popping out, that's what streams towards us and, and we see through uh, things like the Northern Lights. It's important to get close because we want to go and look at that in detail. We also want to go and see what's happening in the solar poles and we can't see that here from Earth so we've got to send this spacecraft there. It's a region that's never been explored before and it's going to be unique science. Uh, in terms of the badging of the thing, the Atlas rockets, obviously American, NASA, uh, this has been done for the European Space Agency uh, but as we mentioned in our introduction, uh, the actual probe itself, uh, what, was all of it built in Stevenage? Um, we spent about, the UK won about £200 million pounds of contracts uh, through this mission. Um, the prime build was done by Airbus in Stevenage. That's about a quarter of the total uh, cost of the flight. So there was much done across Europe through the European Space Agency with our partners there, uh, but we all came together here in the UK. And the UK Space Agency funded four of the ten scientific instruments that are on the spacecraft. They're going to be making all those important measurements, and they've been developed by scientists across the UK. Uh, uh, Libby, we look across the Atlantic in wonder, don't we, at the likes of Musk and uh, Jeff Be Bezos and some of the things they're doing as they, they sometimes call Space 2.0, isn't it? This sort of privatisation of space and the, uh, the sort of buccaneering capitalists of uh, companies like SpaceX. Post-Brexit, uh, how do we get a slice of the cake? Well, the European Space Agency is not an EU organisation and the UK is committed to being part of the European Space Agency. It's very important that we work with our collaborators on that for missions like that. We couldn't do some things like this alone. Uh, we are aiming to be 10% of the global space market by 2030. And in order to do that, we're going to need more and more people are getting excited about space coming and working in this thriving industry here in the UK. And so if anyone thinks that uh, space is something that excites them, there is a role for them, not just in the science and engineering, but right across the industry. Uh, where's our specialism in this? Because one of the other items of space news today, the UAE, we're looking at sending a probe around Mars. It's internationalising as an area of science. Um, so what are we really good at? What should we stick at? Well, the UK is very good at solar physics. This mission was proposed by UK scientists 20 years ago. Uh, so it's building on our strengths there. Uh, we've got many, many strengths across the UK. We're also very good at planetary science. Um, the ExoMars rover that's also being built in Stevenage is gonna head to the red planet to go and look for signs of life. Um, that, as I say, that's something that UK scientists are great in. And our industry has many strengths, communications uh, being one of them. We all rely on satellites every day. That's one of the reasons this mission is so important for the impacts on the solar wind. And without those satellites helping us with telecommunications, also things like navigation and, we and weather, uh, we wouldn't be there. So the, the UK really has strengths right across the board. Libby Jackson is the Human Exploration Programme Manager at the UK Space Agency. Uh, Libby, thanks for your time. Thanks a lot.